Now that we've learned about generic methods and matching, or pattern, pattern matching, I would like us to think about what are the similarities and the differences between both ideas. So I would like us to try out this example. So the example is, I would like to write a serialization function. This is something that is actually already, you've already been using, uh, possibly indirectly, uh, in, in our test cases. So in our test cases, we write just the S expression, and internally, uh, you don't write the AST terms, right? What you write is uh, the S expression, and then internally, each test will parse that expression as an AST, and then it will, if there's an error, it will print out uh, the terms in terms of um, the S expression. Again, it does not show you the ST explicitly. And this is just to simplify uh, and help you and interpret the output. Um, so this is an example of quoting. Quoting is just the part that takes an AST and generates an S expression. Um, so take this example, a very simple language where you have the values, our number and our, our value, and you have expressions, which are either values, variables, or apply. So homework three. Uh, and now I would like us to implement quote with um, matching. Uh, and as you can see, it's very easy here in the slide. Uh, what we do is we match the expression, and if it's a number, you return n. If it's a variable, return that variable. And then with the apply, what you do is you quote the function, and then you quote every element of the list of arguments. So you can just call map for that. And what you return, you do cons. And why do you do cons? I actually have this here in the already opened. So for instance, if you wanted to do, let me write this down. I actually already wrote it, right? Just a second. Okay, I don't need this. Okay. So the idea is if I quote the above uh, AST node, I would get uh, this expression, right? So what I have, uh, if I call this, I match, if I go to apply, right, I need to recursively evaluate this. So I'm on, on this branch, right, 30. Uh, first, I'm going to execute line 30, EF. What is EF? EF is going to be this error variable, um, uh, which means I need to quote it. Uh, and by quoting it, I go to line 27. Uh, and then it finds a variable with plus. So it returns plus, the symbol plus. Uh, and then what I see here, uh, I'm going to evaluate this part of code, which is just doing a map of quote of EA. My input is a list of things, so I'm going to evaluate each element of that list. Not evaluate, sorry, quote. Uh, and the way I quote it is, so the input becomes an R number, which hits on this branch. So a number you just return as field, which means if you do a map of quote, what you get on these two numbers, you get a list with the two numbers, list one, two. And finally, what I'm doing, I'm doing a cons uh, where I'm taking the new EF, which is this symbol plus, uh, and I'm adding it to the list one, two. And that's why it works. Okay. Uh, and now I can even run it. So if I do racket example one, you can see everything is working, uh, including this test. And if you want me, if you want to believe me, I can even copy paste this code right here. Our quote. There you go. You can see the number here. If you want to make sure it's not cooked. There you go. Here you go. 110. So, okay. So things are working. So by now you should, you are starting to believe me. You understand this code, which is great. So you, you know very well by this moment, how to quote an expression, right? Recursively and using a match. Uh, and this is what this slide is all about. Um, now what we can do is look at the implementation using generics. Using generics, you might not even remember that, uh, but it's not that different. What we need to do is first we need to define uh, a generic called something, and we call it quotable. And quotable has a single method, which is this function, rquote. 
uh, and what we're dispatching on is on this particular parameter called quotable. I actually could have added more just by adding random names here. Um, but in this case, the quote just takes on a single argument. And the thing we're dispatching on is that parameter that we want to write quotable. Uh, then what we need to do for each struct, we need to add a, a generic method, which is done with this syntax. You do uh, pound colon methods and then the name. Oops the name of the gen colon, and then the name, in this case, quotable. Uh, and then what you do, a list of definitions. So for numbers, you just do define our quote, because that's the method that you're implementing. So I'm implementing method quote. And this is its co code, which is just returning the number value. Uh, and this works, as you can see, if I do record example two, test passes. And if you don't believe me, I do our quote, of our number. Under, and I call it, as you can see, the number is here. I write 999 or zero. Why not zero? Zero appears. So, okay, so you believe me that this works. Uh, then, if I want to define quoting for variables, I have to do something very similar, but calling field variable, in this case, value. Do the same for Booleans actually ignore the booleans part for now. Uh, and then let me comment it out. Okay. And then if I want to do apply, right? Um, and I call it apply ah, has the trick, right? Because apply has this problem where um, I need to call it recursively, right? And I need to quote um, the argument the argument and, uh, sorry, the function and its arguments. Uh, but the function and its arguments need a generic. So what I'm defining here, to clarify, what I'm defining here is a particular implementation, is the implementation of quote just for apply. It is not the general implementation. So somehow you need to access the general implementation and the way that you do this in Racket is you call define generic and you give it a name and you say, okay, so I'm going to call this rec quote and rec quote is going to be the parent, let's say a generic R quote that will then dispatch for, according to the struct that I'm passing to the correct implementation, right? But you need this, this dispatcher kind of function. It's called rec quote here, uh, which is different from this particular R quote, which is the implementation for R apply. Uh, and then the body is going to be very similar, as I can even show you. Example one. You can see cons, cons. Okay, and then EF, what is EF? Our quote of EF, and now becomes our quote of our apply funk, right? As you know by now, our uh, our apply func is the first field, so therefore EF. Um, and our quote represents the generic version of our colon quote. And then what I do, I do map. Like here, I do map our quote. I need to use the generic version of our quote. And then EA, which is the arguments of the application. Right, so in, in the pattern matching version below, code is a bit more explicit. Here, there's this hoop you have to go through and this mental hoop as well, which is talking about the generic versus the particulars implementation of quote for uh, for a struct, which in this case is apply. Uh, so it's a bit it's a bit more complicated. There's a bit more mental load on understanding this, whereas with the match is a simple if. Um, so these two slides are just explaining these two differences. Um, just as a note, as a side note. Um, generics, you don't have to necessarily just implement a single uh, function, generic function, you can have multiple ones. And you can mark uh, and they can each of these functions can take multiple arguments. And you can mark uh, which argument you want to do this dispatching, which in this case is saying that um, is the second one that I want to do the dispatching, right. So when you register the gen the, the part where you can register against will take the second argument. Uh, similarly, you can take the first argument, you can make the first argument the dispatching part. Um, you cannot do dispatching on two arguments, 
and you cannot uh, ignore or not make any dispatching. So for that, you won't, you don't even need a, a generic function. It's more or less how it works. Uh, just play around it if you're interested. Uh, but now the question is, okay, now I want to add a new data type, in this case, booleans. How do I uh, change my, my code to, to uh, accept a new data type? Well, there's a few things you need to do. Actually, I already showed you the code with the, with the booleans, right? So let me go back to, let me close this on the bottom. So if I go to the matching part, what I need to do, I need to add a new branch, right? That's the only thing. If I wanted to add booleans, I need to change my match. But this doesn't affect, you know, if you add a new boolean um, and your values now also accept booleans, well, that means that all code that is doing a match on an expression need to consider booleans as well. And unfortunately, Racket doesn't even give you an error. Uh, sorry, I mean a, a compile time error. It gives you a runtime error. So if you don't do this, if you forget, forget to do this change, your code will crash with an error saying oh, you didn't cover the case for a boolean, uh, but I was given a boolean. So that is a problem, right? Uh, with generics, it is actually much simpler, as you can see here. What you just do is you just define a struct, uh, and then you implement, you define the struct bool, and in that in that struct, you define that you implement the quotable method. And that's it. Uh, that's as easy as that. Well, but there are other problems, right? You need to understand what generics are, uh, so conceptually is a bit more complicated. Also, as you can see, um, the quote, the code for quoting, very obvious fits in a napkin but here it doesn't it's all spread out depending on each struct has a bit of the code it's hard to get a clear picture and a complete picture of what quoting is is doing right you have to look at all structs you might not even know which structs implement that um, generic so it, there's that problem okay so what is the impact of adding a new kind to summarize in the case of matching, you have to go, if you add a new element to your uh, set of ASTs that your match needs to handle, you need to change that match. And you need to know all the matches that are affecting that set of possibilities so that you can update them. But with a generic, it's simpler in the sense that you, you as long as you can extend the struct to, to implement that method. If you cannot change the struct, then you're kind of go back to the beginning, it might be possible to wrap this struct in another struct, and then that struct um, implements quotable, so that's a workaround. Um, it is also a problem in the sense that here, with quote, you have a clear way of knowing everything that is quotable, whereas with generics, you don't know. It's simply anything that implements, so it's open-ended. Um, which is what I'm saying here. So, to summarize, uh, the code impact of adding a new kind of node with match the code is all centralized is very clear what's going on S maintenance is simpler uh, with this patching code is split around uh, structs uh, possibly different in different files um, with match it's not possible to extend it's hard code on that implementation as long as as soon as you ship it it's fixed in place it's hard coded whereas uh, with dispatching any code can extend the behavior of that generic, which might be a problem, you know, if you want to ship code and you don't want any users to extend it, that might also be a problem. So it's it's really a, a question of whether you want to enable or not extension points. So if you want, then you want to use this patch. If you don't, you want to use a match. Uh, so then try to answer these two questions. Which of the code is centralized? Is it the match or is it the dispatch? And each of which allows for extension points. Is it the match or is it the dispatch? Maybe try to pause the video. Uh, maybe pause the video and try to answer these questions. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through an imp a possible implementation of generics in Racket.